I'm clinical psychologist Dr. Ali Matu, and I'm gonna help you understand what imposter syndrome is and what to do about it. Last week, I got invited to do this big interview. I can't really say anything about it. I had to sign an NDA, but when the interview comes out in the future, later this year, probably, hopefully, sometime, can't say when, but when it does, I'll, I'll share it all with you. The thing about this interview, though, is um, it felt like a really big deal to me because I really respect and admire this organization and the type of stuff they produce. And um, I was really stressed leading up to it because I, I wanted to do a good job. This was going to be a big test of my abilities to communicate psychology clearly, effectively, and simply. And um, I didn't want to mess this up. I've done these kind of things with, um, I've done them on TV, I've done them on national news, I've done collaborations with other YouTubers of different sizes. Each time it seems like the stakes are getting higher. It doesn't seem like it's getting any easier. And each time I do one of these things, I have this fear that people are gonna find out that I don't know what I'm talking about, or that they made a mistake and they should have probably picked someone else, or I'm going to mess up and um, bad stuff is gonna happen. The interview went well, I think. They asked me to stay longer than the time we had budgeted, which is always a good sign in this kind of thing if they're not trying to rush you to get out of the door. My fear now is that I actually did mess up and they might not catch it, but once the thing airs, then all my colleagues will see and they're gonna call me out and they're gonna say everything I did wrong and all the mistakes I made and the way things should have been said. And that thought also really sucks. This is the whole idea behind imposter syndrome. When you have skills, ability, or training that does make you qualified to do a thing, but then you think you are not qualified to do that thing, or you live in fear of being exposed as a imposter or as someone who um, got this opportunity because of luck and you're so fearful that people are going to realize that you have no qualifications, you, should not be here. Now, imposter syndrome is not an actual mental illness. You can't be diagnosed with it. What it is, is a set of experiences that range from very common to very impairing. It's estimated that about 70% of people at some point in their life will experience something like imposter phenomena. And on the other end, um, there are, uh, people who might experience it in a way which makes it very difficult for them to live their lives. They might be able, they might be high achieving, they might do well in their school or in their work, uh, but they experience a lot of distress. It's actually um, quite hard for them to do all the things that they want to do. This graph from Sokulku and Alexander's uh, 2011, I believe, 2011 article on imposter syndrome actually breaks it down really well. I'm gonna put it up on the screen so you can actually see it because these lights are making it hard for you to see. Imposter syndrome can be activated when people are approaching an important achievement-related task, maybe a grade or maybe a presentation you have to do at work, or in my case, an interview. And then that's when anxiety, self-doubt, worry can, uh, can creep in. People who might struggle with this could procrastinate, put the task off, try not to think about it, and then panic and try to um, do a ton of work in preparation right before, or they might actually start over-preparing from the get-go and doing way more preparation than they actually need to do based on their abilities and past experiences. And then the thing happens and it might, uh, it might go well. There's initial little sense of relief 
and maybe you even get positive feedback. Maybe you get a good grade, or maybe you get, um, you hear from the uh, people you're working with that you did well. And that's when people with imposter syndrome really struggle. They have a hard time taking that feedback and digesting it and internalizing it and understanding it and recognizing it. This is when people with imposter syndrome will say, well, I just got lucky. Or they might say, it's because I did all of that work, all of that extra preparation that they probably actually didn't really need to do. And that's when all that self-doubt, feeling like you might be a fraud, feeling like you just escaped detection and someone else might pick up on, on this in the future and realize that you're not really who you say you are. And that's when, over a long period of time, anxiety, depression can sit in uh, for people who might be really struggling with this kind of stuff. And then the next time you face a similar task, this whole pattern will play itself out again. People who struggle with this might want to be the best and imposter syndrome can sink in when they're surrounded by other people who are actually really good at what they do. This happens um, to a lot of people in college. They work really hard to get into college, but then they're surrounded by other people who also got into a really competitive college and also have really good grades. So what does it say about me if I'm surrounded by everyone else's best? Well, not, I can't be the best if everyone here is the best. So what does that say about me? And then imposter syndrome might kick in. People who also experience this might um, find ways to believe why uh, acclaim, praise, or encouragement, or positive feedback uh, doesn't really make sense. They can find ways to discount it, to uh, disprove it, um, to deny it. And then there might be fear or guilt about success. Maybe you have done well, and doing well has actually removed you from the people you're close to or distance you from your family. And that can bring up a ton of uh, emotions in itself. So it's not that people need to experience all of these things, but some combination of these things can come together and produce feelings of imposter syndrome. We know that uh, biology, how someone experiences emotions, their experience with families, cultural background, all of these things can contribute to making someone more vulnerable to experiencing imposter syndrome. Whenever I'm being judged publicly by, uh, by you, or by other professionals, or I'm working with someone who I really admire. I want to live up to their expectations. That's what happened last week. I got to work with people who I love their stuff so much and I think they're really brilliant and smart and I didn't want them to think I'm stupid. And there's three things that come up in that situation for me. One is I don't want them to think I'm stupid. Number two, I want to represent psychology well, and I don't want them to see me and be like, well, he was dumb, psychologists are dumb, let's not invite psychologists back. Because I, I, I have some imposter syndrome about that, that um, psychology isn't always invited to things like this, and I wanna make sure I do psychology right. And then number three, the more I do this stuff, and the more I get invited to do these things, um, the less I see people who look like me in the room. And so I feel a lot of pressure, not only to represent myself and psychologists, but also South Asians and uh, people of color and um, people who are usually not in the room in these kind of situations. I, I feel like I could I could mess it all up and then none of us, <laughs> no one who represents any of the communities that I belong to will get invited back. Here's the good news. There's a lot of stuff involved in imposter syndrome and each of those different points gives us a way to address this. So 
One example is people can play around with the idea of over over preparation or procrastination. Maybe you prepare a little bit less and see what happens. Or maybe instead of postponing any preparation, you might practice taking one piece of it and, and doing it earlier than you would, which might help you to not do a lot of uh, intense preparation last minute. The other thing people can practice is seeing the task um, a little bit differently. And this is actually something that's been very helpful for me. Now, um, when I get these great opportunities that I'm super excited about, I'm not necessarily looking at them as a do or die type of situation. Rather, trying to think of them more as a, uh, as a learning opportunity, an opportunity where I can start to, to learn from these people that I really admire, to see their process, to see how they work. And then there's that feeling of relief. Instead of actually explaining it away, finding ways to cultivate that feeling of relief, to live in it, to um, really be mindful of it and let it sink in for a while. Going above and beyond and eliciting more feedback, getting comfortable, being uncomfortable with that kind of situation. That can be helpful for some people who might discount feedback and explain it away. Really ask someone, hey, how did I do on this? Um, what did you think? What did you think of my performance? Going up to a teacher and getting additional feedback or asking someone in the room where you had to do public speaking, hey, how did I do? Give me the honest truth here. The more you can kind of push yourself, the more you might begin to digest the feedback as honest and real, as opposed to explaining that you just got, thinking of it as you just got lucky and you discount the feedback from other people. And if you're experiencing anxiety or depression, actually getting help for that so you don't let it um, go untreated. The biggest tip I've got for you though is to talk to other people about your imposter syndrome. This has been a game changer for me. You know, I talk to people who have um, the subscriber base that I've got. I've talked to people who have 100,000 or half a million. Everyone feels like they're like a small YouTuber and everyone goes through these doubts. So talk to someone else who's going through a similar kind of experience and you might be surprised at how they feel so similarly as you do with these feelings of being an imposter. Have you ever felt like an imposter? And how'd you deal with it? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want more videos that celebrate mental health and psychology, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to help me make more videos and get uh, behind the scenes content in return, consider becoming a patron on Patreon.